BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Hello and welcome to Homeschool History. I'm Greg Jenner, the historian behind TV's Horrible Histories and the host of the BBC podcast You're Dead to Me. I'm here to deliver a snappy history lesson to entertain and educate the whole family. Who says that homeschooling can't be fun? And today we are journeying back nearly 2,000 years to visit an ancient Roman town that was frozen in time by a volcanic eruption. Yes, we're off to Pompeii in Italy. Now, Pompeii was a pretty ordinary port town with lots of ships arriving all the time. It had lots of nice bits, but it wasn't particularly posh compared to Herculaneum, the much fancier seaside resort next door. Now, Pompeii hadn't started out as a Roman town. It was founded centuries before by a tribe called the Samnites, who spoke the Oscan language. In fact, archaeologists have found bits of Oscan graffiti scribbled on the ancient walls. So how did Pompeii become Roman? Well, about 170 years before that volcano went kablang, there was a huge punch-up called the Social War. Oh. No, that's not when celebrities have arguments on Twitter but rather was a massive outbreak of violence among Rome's allies, known in Latin as the Socii, which resulted in the Romans smashing the Samnites in 89 BCE and then forcing them to all be Romans. One of us! One of us! One of us! One of us! Now, this is obviously a bad time for Pompeii, but not as bad as 79 CE, when life suddenly stopped. The town was close to a massive volcano called Vesuvius, and one day it suddenly went kaboom! Over two days, the eruption killed everyone in the area, and the town and people were buried under meters of thick volcanic ash, and they weren't rediscovered until 1748. This meant that everything and everyone in Pompeii was preserved in ash, frozen in that horrible moment. There were even half-baked bread rolls still in the oven. From this terrible tragedy, archaeologists have been able to learn much more about what life was like for ordinary Roman citizens. However, this fascinating snapshot doesn't give us a perfect window into everyday life, because volcanic eruptions aren't an everyday thing. For example, archaeologists haven't found much furniture in Pompeii. Does that mean Romans didn't use furniture very much? Or had many people already packed up their stuff and evacuated when they first saw smoke coming out of the bubbling volcano? Hmm. I mean, imagine if future archaeologists dug up things from 2020 and decided that everyone in the 21st century always stayed at home, wore masks and hoarded toilet paper. Not very accurate, right? Now, you might ask how many people lived in Pompeii before Vesuvius exploded. The ruined remains of the buildings often don't tell us if homes were multi-storey. Were they bungalows or were they blocks of flats? We're not sure. This makes it tricky to judge the size of Pompeii's population, or population as I like to call it. Our best guess is between 10,000 people and 25,000 people, roughly the size of modern seaside towns like Carnarvon and Skegness. But what would your life have been like if you'd been an ordinary child in ancient Pompeii? Well, like today, you'd have lived with your family, and the size and fanciness of your home would have depended on how rich you were. Posher houses would have had lots of different rooms with a lovely open-air courtyard in the middle and maybe some sprinkling fountains in the garden. The walls would have been painted with bright colours, showing images from Greek and Roman mythical stories, a bit like having scenes from Star Wars all over your bedroom wall. But if you had been less posh, you would likely would have lived in much smaller apartments, maybe in single-room flats above a shop. Or if your parents had been skilled craftspeople, maybe you'd have lived behind the workshop. Now, gardens were expensive, so most people didn't have them, but some people may have had their own Animal Crossing-style veg patch for maximum salad options. And what about going to the loo? Well, Pompeian homes didn't have bathrooms. You'd either have used a potty, which needed emptying daily, or your toilet would have been a wooden seat over a hole, possibly kept in your kitchen, which would then have filled up with poo and food waste. Because why have a toilet and a bin when you can combine both? Oh. Gross. Some Romans might have had a bowl in their house to wash their hands and face, and fancy houses had piped in water, but many people would have needed to fetch their water from a fountain in the street. Luckily, you wouldn't have had to walk very far. 
archaeologists have found more than 40 different wells in Pompeii alone. But please don't try and wash in a public fountain these days, because you'll just get in trouble with the local council. Oi! Get out of that fountain! Now, if you had been a Roman, you wouldn't have needed to worry about getting water for brushing your teeth, because, well, Romans didn't brush their teeth. No, they chewed sticks and rubbed their teeth with rags instead. I think it's safe to assume there were plenty of bad teeth, sore gums, and smelly breath in Pompeii. <gasps> For a proper wash, you'd probably have popped down to the public bathhouse, called the Thermi. These were big buildings where people bathed together in rooms of different temperatures. There, one might have found a steamy sauna, or a cold swimming pool, or even an exercise yard for keeping fit and playing ball games. However, we don't actually know if children were allowed to use the public baths, or if it was just for the grown-ups. In fact, at the Sarno Baths at Pompeii, archaeologists have found graffiti of stick men scratched in at child height near the front doors. Now, was this done by bored children waiting for their parents to stop lounging around in the sauna? Mom! I'll be done in five minutes, okay? Maybe. Now, the bathhouse sounds like good, clean fun, right? Well, not quite. Unlike swimming pools today, Romans didn't use chemicals to kill the germs in the water. So, if you had been allowed in as a child, you'd have been splashing around in other people's bacteria, dead skin, poo particles, and wee. But let's get away from the gross stuff and get to tastier subjects. What might you have had for your tea? Well, home cooking might have been done over a small fire called a brazier. But it must have been pretty dangerous to keep a fire running indoors, and not very easy to use either. I'm not sure many Romans would have aced the signature dish round on the Great British Bake Off. Started making it, had a breakdown. <laughs> bon appetit! So unless you'd been mega rich and had a separate kitchen staffed by enslaved people, you'd probably have gone out to eat. Now, Pompeii had a booming cafe culture with lots of cheap takeaways and pubs. One pub was called the Elephant Bar, and the landlord's name meant Mr. Thirsty. Excellent branding. Another expert advertiser was Aulus Umbricius Scaurus, who was a businessman famed for making four different types of fish sauce. The most popular sauce was Pompeii's speciality dish, garum, made out of rotting fish guts. Mmm, fishy. Scaurus was very proud of his rotten fish sauce and stuck his name all over the place. Even his expensive mansion was decorated with mosaics celebrating his garum empire. And you thought that YouTubers were the pushy ones with their merch. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Besides rotten fish sauce, there were also other Roman delicacies available, like tiny stuffed door mice. And lots of food was sweetened with honey. So there must have been beekeepers in Pompeii. But the truth is, most Romans munched foods that we commonly eat today. Lots of cheese and bread, fruit, veggies, egg, fish and chicken. And how do we know this? Well, because archaeologists have rummaged through a toilet pit under Pompeii's neighbouring town, Herculaneum. Mm. Meaning we know what got digested and pooed out of the other end. One piece of graffiti in Herculaneum boasts, I had a good poo here. Clearly, it wasn't just modern archaeologists who enjoyed their trip to the Roman toilet. This show's called Homeschool History, so let's talk about what school would have been like for you. Well, actually, you'd have only gone to school if you were posh. Oh, and only if you were a boy. Otherwise, you'd probably have worked alongside your parents. And as for the rich boys who did get an education, it still wasn't a great life. There were no schoolhouses, so you'd probably have been taught outside. Bit rubbish if it rained. Also, teachers could smack their students. Ow! And I mean really, really hit you. Ow! You might be surprised to learn that your teacher might have been an enslaved person, perhaps from Greece. Another horrible reality of Roman life was that disease was very, very common. And without modern antibiotics and vaccines, sadly, half of children didn't survive to become grown-ups. But if you'd made it to the age of 10, then you would have had a decent chance of living a pretty long life. And if that wasn't bad enough, apart from a few simple toys here and there, there wasn't much for kids to play with back then. There were board games and there were dice, but we don't know if these were played with by children or if they were mostly for grown-ups. Can I play? Nope. Bit rude? 
You might have played with hoops, balls, yo-yos or skimming stones, but only once you'd finished being beaten by your teacher or working like a grown-up all day long. <sighs> so there you have it. Pompeii is the story of ordinary Romans whose busy lives were suddenly cut short by a calamity. But they died the way they lived, surrounded by mosaics dedicated to rotten fish guts and graffiti dedicated to enjoying a poo. Lovely. We've come to the end of the episode, but we still have time for our quiz. We have five questions. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Question one. In which year was Pompeii destroyed by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius? Question two. Pompeii was famous for making garum sauce, but what was it made of? Question three. Where was children's graffiti found in Pompeii? Question 4. What did many people in Pompeii do for dinner? And question 5. How do archaeologists know what people in Herculaneum ate? OK, let's do the answers. The answer to question 1. Pompeii was destroyed in 79 CE. The answer to question 2. Pompeii was famous for its rotten fish gut sauce, garum. Question 3. The graffiti was found in the bathhouse. The answer to question four, most Pompeians ate out for dinner in pubs and takeaways. And the answer to question five, archaeologists have analysed the poo in a toilet pit under Herculaneum. How did you do? If you didn't get all five, that's OK. Why not listen to a different episode from series one or two on BBC Sounds? Hopefully you're now a Pompeii powerhouse. Tune in next time for some more homeschool history. And make sure to subscribe to the podcast on BBC Sounds so you never miss an episode. Thank you for listening, take care and goodbye.